Hi guys! Did you ever wanted to have a better display for your P1P or P1S 3D printers? Maybe something similar with the one from the X1 Carbon? Well, Big Tree Tech just released the new Panda Touch for the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. And we think you are going to like it. Do you want to know everything about this new display? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as we mentioned before the intro, Big Tree Tech just released the Panda Touch display. Basically, it's a 5 inch touch display that is compatible with all the Bamboo Lab printers, including the AMS units. It can work with the external power source or with its own internal battery. Since it's equipped with an internal battery and Wi-Fi connection, we can take it anywhere as long as it's connected to our network. It's super easy to install and set up, and no modifications or hacks are required on the printer side. It has very intuitive menus and with the same architecture as the X1 Carbon and Slicer. It can monitor and control up to 10 3D printers. And the display's firmware can be easily updated if needed. Inside the package, we have a small booklet, the user manual and the sticker. Next is the display and a small box. Inside this box, we have the traditional rubber duck, a metal stand, screws, an Allen key, and a USB cable. Ok, and this is everything that came inside the package. The 5 inch screen fills almost the entire enclosure. At the side, there is only a USB connector to connect a flash drive, and at the back is already attached the magnetic plastic mount. The plastic mount has a USB connector that is used to charge the display. If we remove the mount, we can see a small three-way switch. With this switch, we can turn the display on and off, turn it on powered by the internal battery, or turn it on with external power source. Next to the switch is a small I2C connector. The installation is very simple. We use the screws to secure the stand to the mount. Then we can have the display on our desk or on the printer. For the external power source, we can use any 5 volt charger or we can use the power from the USB connector from the printer. For the P1S and P1P 3D printers, the USB connector is located inside just behind the stock display. To pass the cable from the inside, we can use this small opening. We can use the USB cable that came with the Panda display to connect the charging stand like this. We can then attach the display on the frame and glue it using the double side tape that is under the stand. If you use the Wham Bam's hot box enclosure, you can pass the USB cable through the stock display opening. There are other solutions online that are also worth mentioning, such as this one where the Panda display sits on top of the stock display, but with easy access to it if we want to. The first time we turn the display on, we get a greeting screen and the Wi-Fi network setup. In here, we need to select our network and enter the Wi-Fi credentials. Next, we add our printers. Clicking on Scan, the display will check which Bamboo Lab printers are connected to our network. At this point, we have our P1P and our P1S turned on and the display was able to find them. The display can also know which model is which and show a graphic representation of them. The only thing we need to enter is the access code. 
At the bottom left corner is the option to access the instructions on how to find the printer's access code, which is going through the printer's stock display menus and get the access code. Once we enter that access code, the display is fully connected to the printer. If we leave the switch on, on the external power source side, the display will turn on and off with the printer. The main screen is this one. In here, we can turn the printer's light on and off, check the Wi-Fi signal, read the nozzle temperature, the heat bed temperature, and the chamber temperature. The chamber temperature cannot display any value because the printer does not have the sensor. On the second button, we can control the printer's functions, such as temperatures, printing speed, cooling fans, X, Y, and Z axis, and extruder. On the filament tab, we can load and unload filament. This is basically very similar with the user interface of the touch display from the X1 Carbon. The third button allows us to access the memory card and select the file to print. If we have a flash drive attached to the display, we can also access it on the USB flash drive tab. On the fourth button, we have access to several settings for the display. It's also possible to check the display's current firmware version. The firmware can be updated if new versions get released in the future. On the fifth button, we can see all the printers connected to the display and select which one is the main one for the control menus. We can have several printers connected and we can access them all through this display. This is actually one of the features we enjoy the most. As you can see, here we have both our P1P and our P1S printers running different jobs and we can monitor them at the same time. Editing filament types and colors on the Panda display is one of the things you couldn't do with the stock display of the P1 series. Also, all the alarms and errors are displayed automatically on the display and we can respond accordingly. One thing we noticed is that the display uses the printer's IP address to connect itself to the printer. And when turning the printer off and on again, sometimes it gets a different IP address. When that happens, the display is unable to connect to the printers automatically, so we need to edit the IP address so it can connect again. One other thing we noticed is, when moving manually the Z-axis, the down button moves the bed up instead of down, and the up button will move the bed down instead of up. These buttons are moving the bed in opposite direction when compared with the Bamboo Studio. At the same time of the release, Big Tree Tech announced that Bamboo Lab might make some network safety changes to their firmware and this might cause the Panda Touch to not work as intended because some commands might not work anymore. This means that if we want to keep our Panda display working as it is right now, we cannot update the printer's firmware or wait for a new display firmware release from Big Tree Tech. Currently, the display is working perfectly with today's printer firmware versions. On Big Tree Tech's webpage, they have the information of which printer's firmware the display is still compatible with. Okay, so here are the pros and cons of this display. On the positive side, we have the price. The display has a very nice price considering all it offers. It's very easy to install and connect to the printer and does not require any modification on the printer side. It has most of the options and menus from the touch version of the X1 Carbon. The Panda display is much more user-friendly than the stock display from the P1 series printers can also receive the errors and warnings and let us act accordingly. The display can connect to multiple printers simultaneously and let us monitor them, which is very handy. It's compatible with all the Bamboo Lab printers, including the AMS units. And for the negative side, we have 
the fact that the firmware modification on the printer's side can make the display to stop working as intended. This makes us check the Big Tree Tech webpage every time a new firmware for the printer is available and see if the update will interfere with the display. Changes in the printer's IP address after a power cycle will cause the display not to be able to connect to the printer. It would be nice if the printer could scan the network for the lost printer and reconnect it again using the new IP address. The Z-axis buttons move the bed in the opposite direction when compared with the Bamboo Studio and this is confusing. There are also a few limitations and small bugs on this current firmware version. But Big Tree Tech is planning on releasing future versions with fixes and updates. And that's it you guys! Feel free to let us know what you think about this new display on the comment section below. And thanks for watching! We will see you guys next time. Bye!